we got to do. Bar graphs, y'all. When I taught when I taught this in my contemporary math class, this was like, oh man, everybody's like, sir, can we have like 30 questions on the test like this? Because they're really easy breezy cover girl, right? So look, y'all, this is just looking at pictures. We have pictographs here. And if you notice, y'all, in the pictograph, we're talking about the top eight most spoken primary languages. So if I look at this, each individual person is supposed to represent 50 million speakers, right? Now, it says approximate the number of people who primarily speak Hindi. So I'm looking here at Hindi, and I got one, two, three, four, five. If there's five little persons there, and each one of those persons represents 50 million speakers, would you all agree that we're just going to take five times 50? And that would mean that there's 250 million people who speak Hindi, right? So again, it's just like looking at the picture, right? Okay, look at the second question, y'all. The second question says, how many more people speak English than Hindi? So look, here's English. So with Hindi, we knew that there was five people. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. How many more is that, though? Right, but but let me ask you a question. From I, I'll, we'll get to the seventy-five million. It's it's one and a half more, right? So aren't we going to take one and a half times fifty? And you guys said that was what seventy-five million. Does that make sense? Right, because it's one and a half more. Okay, what about Spanish? How many people speak Spanish? Let's count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times fifty is that four hundred? right okay how many more people speak spanish than arabic okay so spanish had we said eight arabic has one two three four and a half how much more is eight from four and a half what three and a half right so we're going to take three and a half times 50. so look let me get my calculator 3.5 times five zero 175 right 175, again, million, right? What do you think? Picture graphs, pretty straightforward on how to do them, All right? Not much to it. Okay, so look, guys, I'm going to keep scrolling down here, and we got another problem with pictographs. And it says, the following pictograph shows the approximate number of solar system explorations by various countries or space consortia from 1957 until the present day. Okay, so look, what's important here, y'all, is that one of those little spaceships represents that they explored eight solar systems, right? Okay, so the first question here says, approximate the number of solar system exploration missions undertaken by the United States. Okay, so look, I'm gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so the United States had 17. So we're going to take 17 times how much? Times 8. Perfect. Right? So that's what I mean, y'all, that most people find this part pretty straightforward. 136. Okay. And now the second part says approximate how many more solar system exploration missions have been undertaken by the United States then by the uh, USSR, Russia. So Russia had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and a half. So 15 and a half, how much more is 17 from 15 and a half? If we were to subtract 1.5? Right, so 17 minus 15.5 is one and a half. We're going to take one and a half times how much? Eight. Times eight, right? And that should give us 12? Good. Okay. okay, what about the European Space Agency? How many spaceships did they have? One and a half. So again, we're going to take one and a half times eight, which is still going to be what? Still going to be 12, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, now look at the next one, y'all. It says approximate the to total number of solar system explorations undertaken by the European Space Agency and Japan. So if we're going to take all of those together, how many spaceships do we got there? Uh, we got what, two and a half, right? So we're going to take two and a half times what number again? Eight. Times eight. And that's going to give us what, 16? There you go. Uh, is it no? It's got to be more than sixteen, right? Isn't it twenty? Twenty, right? Yeah, it's twenty, right? Because we know eight times two is sixteen, and we know half of eight is four, and we add those together. There's our twenty, right? What do y'all think? Pictographs? Not too bad to do. Okay, so let's take a look here, y'all. I got another problem dealing with pictographs, and it says. Uh, let's see. The accompanying pictograph shows the number of bicycles or bicyclists, excuse me, who participated in the Labor Day weekend bicycle race for the years 2003 to 2009. Okay, use the graph to answer the question. In what year did the greatest number of cyclists participate? What year had the most number of little bicycles? 2009. There's our answer. Boom, right there, right? All you got to do is look at the picture, right? Which one had the most little bikes? Okay, okay so look, y'all, the next one here says, the following bar graph shows the number of endangered species in the United States in 20, uh, 2013. Use the graph to answer the questions. Okay, so I'm going to try to zoom out. Sorry, guys, I didn't put the spacing as good. Okay, so let's take a look here. Approximate the number of endangered species that are clams. Okay, so here's clams. I'm going to zoom in, y'all, so I can see this a little bit better. Okay, so look, if these are 20, 40, 60, 80, would you guys agree that's got to be 10, 30, 50, right? 70 and 90. Okay, so if here are clams, remember, y'all, approximate means let's take a guess, but let's take a good guess, okay? So when I say let's take a guess, a good guess, I don't mean that you got to be as precise as maybe some of us might think, but I know I'm not going to list like 121, right? Because I know that's not where we are. What number would you say is between 70 and 80? 75. 75. That's a really good approximation, right? Now, if somebody says, well, sir, I thought it was 74, that's fine too. They have something called a tolerance, y'all. Tolerance means if you said 75, they're going to say, yeah, 75 plus or minus one or plus or minus two. So if you said anywhere between, say, 73 and 77, you're probably going to be okay. If you said 80, we know that's not right because we weren't as high as 80, right? Which one had the most endangered species? So, y'all, if I look at this thing here, which was the highest bar? The fishes, right? Is that the plural? Fishes? Fishes. Fish. Okay. What about amphibians? Let's go back over here, y'all. Let's take a look amphibians so look here's amphibians what would you guess amphibians to be about 18 19 something like that yeah that's fine again y'all i don't want you to get too bogged down with look if i put 18 or 19 is it going to be okay yeah we're going to be okay with that uh which one had the fewest so let's come back again y'all let's look at the fewest now the fewest y'all is going to be the smallest bar so let me ask you a question. Which one looks, I mean, when I'm looking at this here, I can tell it's going to be either the reptiles or the spiders, right? The arachnids. Which one looks like it's actually smaller? The spiders, right? The arachnids right here, because it's just a hair over that one. And this one here, it's a little bit bigger, right? So we know the arachnids is going to be the fewest, right? I don't know about y'all, but I wish there were more endangered spiders, right? arachnids okay so here's my next problem here y'all and it says the bar graph shows the number of major storms by month that have made landfall in a region between 1851 and 2005 okay in which month did the most major storms make landfall in a region so which bar am i going to look at y'all august right we're just looking at the biggest bar so again, like when you all take the TSI test, are you going to have questions like this? Yeah, you're going to have questions like this. Now, you're probably not going to have like 50 questions like this, but you're going to have a few. But the main thing I want to make sure is we know how to read graphs, and most of us are pretty good with that. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Here's the next one. And it says the horizontal bar graph shows the population of the world's cities, including their suburbs. Name the city with the third largest population and estimate its population. So, y'all, we don't want the biggest one. We want the third biggest one. But aren't they in order from the biggest to the smallest going down this way? So which is the third biggest one? City what? City C. Okay, now we're going to try to estimate the population. So look, here's City C. If we were to kind of come down, maybe something like that, right? What would you guys get, uh, guess? 24, 25, 26? 25, 26? I know my, my line's a little crooked, right? So maybe 25 seems... That seems pretty reasonable, right? So I would say 25 million, right? And it says round to the nearest whole number. So we're not going to put like 25.3, right? Because they want me to go to the whole number. Okay. okay, the horizontal bar graph shows the population of the world cit cities. Okay, we're looking for the one with the largest population. So which is the one A, right? A has to have the largest population. Okay, and if we were to estimate that, y'all, 39, that sounds reasonable to me. Boom, there you go, 39, and we're done, okay? So, again, I hope when you all take your test, you have a ton of bar graph problems. Okay, uh, the bar graph shows the expenditures of a city government in a recent year. Y'all, the hardest, I think the hardest part of these problems is just to make sure that you read the question carefully. Look what it says. How much more was spent on health than on fire? So health here, if I were to estimate health, what number would you guess that to be? Six. Okay. If we were to go fire, what number would you guess that to be? Four. So how much more is six than four? Two, right? So look, we got a couple of choices here. We got 2.4, we got 2.6. Okay, so I'm gonna try to, you know, guess the best that I can. I might have to zoom back in. Let's see. That seems there, yeah. So I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna pick one of those two, y'all. Again, I, I'm gonna be real honest with you here. Um, I'm sorry? Five is closer to help. Let's see. Let's come back here. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I would say you're probably right. It looks like like five and a half, maybe something like that. Five point five. Fire looks like it's right about. Yeah, I would probably go with D two. That was probably my bad in terms of when I was looking at my graph. So, y'all, one thing I want to mention is, you know, when I pull these problems, uh, a lot of times in on the software, like on my lab, if you guys do any of the practice problems, you can zoom in a little bit more. And maybe that's just what I needed to do was zoom in a little bit more. So that was my bad there. But, yeah, I would say that's probably pretty reasonable. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. The bar graph shows, okay, which one had the name the agency with the what? smallest spending so which one had the smallest environment okay so environment guys if i look at my choices a b c and d what does the answer have to be it has to be c right we don't even have to worry about finding the exact value because that was the only one that had environment on there right okay okay so the next thing i have here y'all is something called Frequency tables and histograms. A frequency table is just giving me a way to organize some information. So look what it says here. It says, suppose that the test scores of 36 students are summarized in the table. Okay, I don't know what they actually made. I just know their ranges. So one person made somewhere between a 40 and a 49. Three people made somewhere between a 50 and a 59, right? What did they make? I don't know. They could have made 50s. All three of them could have made 59s. I don't know. I just know that they're in that range. Does that make sense? Okay. We had two people who made in the 60s. We had 10 people who made in the 70s, 12 who made in the 80s, and eight who made in the 90s, right? This is what we call their frequency table. It tells me the number of 
think about frequency. How many times does this happen? So how many times did somebody make an A or how many A's did we get? We got eight A's, right? We got 12 B's, we got 10 C's. This is what we call a frequency table. With a frequency table, we can make a particular bar graph called a histogram. This is what the histogram is. It's just doing, taking that same information, but putting it on a bar graph, okay? So when you're doing these types of problems, you know, sometimes they give them to you in the table. Sometimes they give it to you in the, in the histogram or the bar graph. Sometimes, like in our case, we have them both, okay? So all we're going to do is try to answer the next questions that we got here, okay? So look, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the information, y'all, given to me in this table to label my histogram. So y'all agree that this number here is a one. That's a three. That's a two. That's a 10. That's a 12. And that's an eight, right? And all I'm doing, y'all, is just copying the numbers from that I have from there, okay? Now, the reason I want to do that is just so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, okay? So look, let's see if we can answer the questions. How many students earned a grade between a 50 and a 59? We would say it was how many? Three. Look at this one, y'all. How many students earned grades 70 or higher? What numbers, what, what numbers would I use? 10, 12, and 8, right? Because those are either 70 or higher. Is that not 30? Okay. What about how many students earned grades of 69 or less? What numbers would I look at? One, three, and two. Perfect. I could have stayed home today, y'all. That's six, right? Y'all, what about the total number of students? If we were to add them all up together, what number would we get? 36, right? We already knew this was 30. We already knew that was six. Okay, 36. Now, y'all, when we were here on Friday, we talked about percentages, okay? Look what it says. What percent of students earn grades 70 or higher? Let me ask you a question. Do, you, do we know the total number? Total number was how much? 36. Okay. Out of the 36, how many people made a 70 or higher? 30, right? Look, y'all, this is what my answer would be as a fraction. We want to change that to a percent. If you recall, y'all, from Friday, the way we did this, uh, let's try to make it a little smaller, but it's okay. The way we did this, y'all, was we said, let's take 30, let's divide it by 36, and let's see what we get. So I'm getting that right there, right? Now, remember, I want to change this to a percent, so I'm going to move my decimal two spaces over. Again, y'all, when you're doing these types of problems on the exam, it'll tell you, hey, round it to the nearest tenth of a percent or round it to the nearest hundredth of a percent or something like that. Suppose you wanted to round to the nearest tenth. The tenth, remember, is the first number behind my decimal point. The question I want to ask you guys is, should I put 83.3 or should I put 83.4? Look at the number to the right. 83.3, right? 83.3%. Okay, good. Remember, the only time we're going to change our number, we're going to round it up, is if the number to the right is a five or more, right? If the number to the right, let me come back here again. If the number, if this three right here, because I'm trying to round the first one, if this three right here is a five or more, then that three goes up to a one by one, right? So it'd go up to a four. Okay, what percent of students earn grades 69 or less? Remember, we had a total of 36 students, right? And how many of them made 69 or less? Six of them, right? So look, let's do the same thing here. Let's take six, let's divide it by 36, okay? Let's multiply that by 100. Again, y'all, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. Question I want to ask you, 16.6 or 16.7? 16.7, right? Now, y'all, we talked about this, I want to say, on Friday as well. Remember I told you that if Tim Smith says, hey, you know what, guys, there's an 80% chance that it's going to rain, then what's the percent chance that it's not going to rain? We would take 100 minus 80, right? That would tell us there's a 20, if there's an 80% chance that it is going to rain, that means that there's a 20% chance that it won't, right? My other way we could have done this, y'all, we could have said, look, let's take 100 minus 83.3. And look what we're left with, 16.7, right? So if this is a percent chance that people pass, then this is a percent chance that they don't pass, right? Does that make sense? 
Okay, so I just wanted to give you a heads up. There's different ways you can go about it. Is there one way that's more right than the other? No, it's whatever way comes naturally to you, okay? All right, so look, y'all, I got another histogram here. So this histogram here, it looks like we have on the horizontal scale, I mean, the vertical scale going up and down, we have the number of days. On the horizontal scale, we have the ranges of temperature. So look, when I'm, when I'm looking at this part, y'all, it tells me, look, there's a certain number of days that the temperature was between 82 and 84, between 85 and 87, 88 and 90, 91 and 93, 94, 96. How many days was the temperature between 82 and 84? One day? How many days was it between 85 and 87? This one here? Three days, right? How many days was it between 88 and 90? 11 days. What about this one? Seven. And this one here? Perfect. Okay. So look, y'all, I want to label that so that we can now answer our question. How many days was the temperature between 91 and 93? We would say seven days, right? Okay. How many days had temperatures 85 degrees or higher? Y'all agree we would look at these right here? Okay. So look, let's add those numbers up. Three and 11 and seven and eight. Anybody got a calculator? Anybody know what that is? 29? Okay, thank you. Okay. Y'all, what about the next one? How many days was the temperature 90 degrees or cooler? Y'all agree we would look at the first three? Because that's 90 degrees or what? Or less, right? 90 degrees or cooler. So we would take one plus three plus 11. Is that 15? Okay. What temperature readings had the most days? So look, y'all, the biggest graph was the one that had 11, right? But it's asking me for the temperature readings. The temperature readings would have been between what? 88 and 90 degrees. Does that make sense? Because it's asking me not for the number of days. It was asking me which one had the most. Well, we know the 11 days was the most, but what was the range there, right? Okay, which ones had the least days? between 82 and 84, okay? Y'all, when it says how many days were the temperatures recorded, what do you think we're gonna do here? Add them all up? Okay, so let's do that real quick. Uh, let's see, let me clear this. Let's go one plus three plus 11 plus seven plus eight. 30 days? Okay. 30 days. Okay. Now let me zoom back in y'all so we can answer the rest of the questions. And it says, what percent of the days had temperatures of 85 degrees or higher? So remember my total number of days y'all was 30. If we want to know 85 degrees or higher, that was the total of how much? 29 out of 30. So remember y'all, we've done this part before. We're going to take our calculator and see if I can, there we go. We're going to take our calculator. We're going to say, what's 29 divided by 30? And we're going to multiply it by 100. Let's stick with rounding to one decimal place. So what do you think? 96.6 or 96.7? 96.7%. Okay. And the next one says, what percent of the days had temperatures of 90 degrees or less? So look, 30 days total. 90 degrees or cooler is the same thing as 90 degrees or less. So look, we're going to go 15 divided by 30, and we're going to multiply it by 100. And what percent do we have? 50%, right? Isn't 50% half? And isn't 15 half of what number? Of 30, right? Question, how do you guys feel so far about reading pictographs, bar graphs, histograms? Seems okay? All right, for the most part, people usually do okay with these problems. The, the hardest part, y'all, is that you just have to read the part, okay? Uh, let's take a look here. So, y'all, this is, uh, in part of the stuff dealing with frequency tables, part of it comes down to, sometimes you have a set of data, like you have a bunch of numbers. All they're asking me to do here, y'all, it says, look, the list shows the golf scores for an amateur golfer. Uh, use this list to complete the frequency distribution table. 
Okay, all they're asking me to do here is they're saying, let's look at those numbers there. Can you tell me how many numbers are in the 70s? So look, if I go down here, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's how many? That's all we're doing. We're just counting how many numbers are in the 70s, okay? All right, same thing here. The list shows the uh, golf scores for an amateur golfer. So again, another set of scores. We're looking for the number of scores that are in the what? In the 90s. Okay, so let's go through one, uh, two, uh, three, just three, right? That's all it's asking me to do there. Okay, how many numbers were in the 90s? Okay. Uh, the histogram shows the scores of each participant in a game from a total of 100 participants. How many participants scored between 40 and 59? So look, y'all, here's 40 and 59. What would you say this bar is? 25, right? Look, there it is right there. There's my bar. Look, there's my answer, right? So again, I'm just reading the problem. I'm just looking at the picture, okay? All right. Okay, y'all, still dealing with frequency tables here, okay? 25 people in a survey were asked to give their current checking account balances. Uh, use the balances shown in the following list to complete the frequency distribution table. Okay, we're looking for numbers between what? Zero and 99. So we don't want any hundreds or 200s or 300s. We want anything smaller than that. So in the first column, there's one. In the second column, nothing. Two. And the next one, three. And the last one, one more? Four, right? So we were looking for anything that had how many digits? Two, right? Awesome. Good, y'all. Okay, still dealing with the same type of problem. Now we're looking for numbers in the what? And the 200s. So I'm just going to look at my numbers. And if it starts with a two, I want it. If it doesn't start with a two, it's got to be a three-digit number, though. But if it starts with a two, I want it. Uh, and it's got to be a three-digit number. So look, there's one right here. Uh, two, three, right there. Four right there. Uh, let's see. Five and six. Does that seem right? Okay, six. There we go. Again, all we're doing, y'all, we're just counting, right? In the 200s. Okay, so it looks like we got one more. And now we want the numbers in the what? In the 400s, right? Okay, so let's count the numbers in the 400s. I got one. Uh, nothing in the second column. Nothing in the third column, nothing in the fourth column, not, so just one, right? It was just one number in the 400s. All right. Okay. So, y'all, I'm still dealing here with histograms, and it says the histogram shows the scores of each participant in a game from a total of 100 participants. Look at the question. How many more participants scored in the 40 to 59? Then in the 0 to 19. So how many people scored in the 0 to 59? 25? Okay. Uh, how many scored in the 0 to 19? What would you say that looks like? That looks like it's about 6, right? Because this is the hair above the 5. Okay. So now my question to you, y'all, if it says how many more, what are we supposed to do with those numbers? Subtract them, right? Well, where did my, where did my problem go? There we go. Okay. So we're going to take, what, 25? Minus six is 19. There's our answer. Okay. Y'all, the, the main thing I want to mention, for the most part, people are pretty good about reading the bar graphs. You just got to make sure that you're careful with the questions, okay? So when it says how many more, remember what that means? That means I got to subtract, right? The bigger number minus the smallest number. Okay. Uh, the histogram shows the projected ages of householders in the near future. The most householders householders will be in what age range? So y'all agree this is the biggest bar right here? Okay, what is the range of the years, though? 35 to what? 
44, boom, and there's my answer, right? So again, they're not looking for like, you know, 25 or something like that. They're looking for that number because it says what age range, and those are the age ranges, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Use the histogram or the histogram shows the projected ages of householders in the near future. How many householders will there be for the 45 to 54? Here's the 45 to 54. What would you guess this number to be? 24. 24 so we're going to drop in at 24 right there, right? Okay. So guys, I'm just gonna keep working here. And it says the following line graph shows the average daily temperature for each month in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, so you can see y'all, what do you think this JFMA, what do you think that stands for? The months, right? January, February, March, April, so on and so forth. Okay, look at the first question. During what month is the average daily temperature the what? The highest, what month would you say this is? That is July, right? That is July. Okay. Now, second question. During what month from July to December? So look, y'all, this is the July to December part. Okay. So I'm looking at that part of the graph. Is the average daily temperature about 65 degrees? So look, I'm going to scroll this way. Boom. What month would that be? September, right? Okay, wake me up when September ends. And it says, during what months is the average daily temperature less than 30? Okay, so look, y'all, we're going to go right here. We're going to say, look, here's 30. Okay. What months are lower than that? January, February, and December. Okay. Jan, Feb. December. Okay, perfect. When is it the lowest, Joel? January, right? January is the lowest one. Perfect. Okay, uh, we got two more. During what month is the average daily temperature 25? Let's see, 25 was which one? Uh, but let's see. So look, hold on, let's, let's go slowly. During what month is the average daily temperature 25? So look, y'all, if here's 25, but is it is it 25 in February or is it a little bit above? In February, it's a little bit what? Is it a little bit above? So wouldn't it really be what? I would say it's probably going to be December. Okay. And then there's one more. During what months is the average daily temperature? Look what it says, y'all. Greater than 70. Okay, so look, let me come back over here. Look, here's 70. I'm going to try to do this as good as I can. Okay, greater than 70. Wouldn't it be this month, this month, and that one? So what months are those anyway? June, July, and August? Well, that makes sense. Whatever. Uh, let's see. June, July, and August. Okay, June, July, and August. Okay. All right, so I got another line graph here, y'all. It says the line graph shows the average uh, Martian League baseball player salary has increased over a six-year period. Compare the average salary in 2001 to the average salary in 1999. How much did the average salary increase from 1999 to 2001? Okay, so look, y'all, if I were to guess what this number here would be, what number would you say? About 1.4, okay? Now, if I were to do the same thing for 2001, what number would you guess that to be? 1.6, okay. And the question says, by how much did it increase? So we're gonna go 1.6 minus 1.4, 0 0.2, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so again, y'all, I'm just reading the picture. Again, when it says how much more, remember, when it says how much more, you're going to subtract, right? Okay, 
Let me zoom out a little bit till we get to the next part. Okay, circle graphs. All right, so let's talk a little bit about circle graphs. So it says, find the ratio of adults preferring basketball to total adults. Okay, so number one, y'all, a ratio, just, we talked a little bit about this on, on Friday, but again, I know it's, you know, it was Friday, right? Ratio means we're going to write a fraction. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. The number on the top, y'all, is going to be basketball. So how many basketball folks did we have? We had 20. Okay, the bottom number is going to be total adults. So y'all, we're going to grab our calculator real quick, and we're just going to add up all those numbers. So 20 and 37 and 4 and 3 and 8 and 13 and 15 and that's a total of 100 okay now so there it is right but look what it tells me to do write it in its simplest form question can i get rid of that zero and that zero okay so look now we have a 2 over 10. Y'all remember in our Blackboard page, let me come back here real quick. We have as well, we got our multiplication table, right? So if I want to reduce two and 10, do you guys agree we can divide them both by how much? Two, right? So look, two goes into two, how many times? And two goes into 10, how many times? Five, okay, so we're gonna go, this is one over five, right? Because we're just dividing them both by two. Okay, uh, the next question says, write the ratio of adults preferring golf to total adults. So remember, my total was already 100, right? How many folks like golf? Eight. Okay, y'all, what do you think we can divide them both by? Let's go by four. Okay, four goes into eight, two times, right? Anybody know how many times four goes into 100? 25, boom. And then you're done. Guys, remember, if you want to, you can go slower. You can say, look, let me divide them both by two. Half of eight is four. Half of 100 is 50, right? So if you wanted to, just an, just an alternative, right? If you divided them by two, that would be four, and that would be 50. You can divide them by two again. That's going to be two. That's going to be 25. You get the same answer, right? Which way is better? It's up to you, right? Okay, let's take a look here, y'all. Um, okay, it says the circle graph shows the results of the student council presidential election. The complete circular area represents 100% of the votes. Okay, so there were a total of 200 votes cast, okay? We want to know how many votes did Gina get? Okay, so look, y'all, Gina got what percent of the votes? 35, right? So she got 35%. So remember, we're going to find 35% of the total, which was 200, right? Okay, so we talked about, again about this on Friday, y'all. Y'all remember how do I write 35% as a decimal? 0.35. Remember what the word of means to do? Perfect, man. Great, y'all. So look, 0. 0.35 times 200, 70? Is that one of my choices? There it is. Boom. All right. Again, I'm still, I'm reading a circle graph, but I'm having to go back and remember how did we do percentage problems, right? Uh, let's take a look here, y'all. Similar type problem. Similar type problem. It says, the circular graph shows the results of the student council presidential election. The complete circular area represents 100% of the votes. Okay, look how many votes we had total. 600. Find the ratio of Ann's votes to the total votes count, uh, total votes cast. Okay, remember y'all, ratio means we're going to have a fraction. Ann's votes. Ann received 32% of the 600, so that's 0.32 times 600. 192? Over the total, what was the total number of votes? 600. 
Okay, so guys, again, you have options here. We want to reduce this fraction, okay? We want to reduce this fraction. So look, uh, I don't know. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to divide them by 2. That's 96. If I divide them by 2, that's 300. Okay, still, have, still not anywhere close to where I need to get, but I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to divide them by 2 again. 48. Half of 300 is 150. I'm going to divide them by 2 again. 48 divided by 2, 24. 24. Half of 150, y'all, should be 75. Okay. Now, I cannot divide them by 2 anymore. Why? Because even though 2 goes into 24, 2 does not go into what? Okay. So if I can't go by 2, what's the next biggest number? Let's try three. What's 24 divided by three? Eight. What's 75 divided by three? Oops. Divided by three. Yep. 25, right? Boom. Okay. Is that one of my choices? Boom. There it is, right? So what did we do? We said, look, if I can't think of a big number, stay small. Divide them by two. When you can't go by two anymore, try three. If I couldn't try three anymore, guys, I would not go with four because we've already done the twos. I would go with five. You see what I'm saying? I'm just going to kind of keep progressing that way. Okay. Uh, let's see. The circle graph shows the results of the student council presidential election. The complete circular graph or complete circular area represents 100% of the votes. 400 total votes. How many people voted for someone other than Ann? Okay, so look, y'all. Ann got how many percent of the votes? Okay. Let's figure out the percentage of the others. Let me get rid of my email, guys, because that thing is going to keep ding, 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 ding. Boom, there we go. Okay, so let's see. The others, would that be, what, 17? And what else? 22? And what else? 35. That is 74%. Okay, 74%. So we want to find 74% of the total, right? So isn't that 0. 0.74 times 400? Right? So look, let's do it like this. Let's take 0. 0.74 times, what do we say, 400? 296. Is that one of my answers? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So how come when we added the total of the 17 and 25, we didn't like take the rest of them? Okay. So remember, all I'm doing is I'm just adding those percentages, right? I'm saying, look, what's 17% plus 22% plus 35%? And that gave us what? 74%? Bless you. And then we said, look, how do I change that to a decimal? We can try it as 0.74, right? Yeah, you don't have to individually do it. Guys, another thing we could have done in this problem here, again, just this is just another way, right? Other way. Is we know that Ann got what percent of the votes? 26%, right? So we could have done this. We could have said, look, let's take 0. 0.26 times 400, right? So look, y'all, I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. I'm going to say, what's 0. 0.26 times 400, okay? And that's 104. That means that Ann got 104, what, votes, right? Look what it says. How many people voted for someone, what, other than Ann? So how many votes did Ann not get? Well, there was a total of 400, right? And Ann got, what, 104? Wouldn't we say let's take 400 minus 104? And what number do we get? That's another way we could have done the problem, right? So again, what I want to mention, y'all, is the reason I'm showing you this, I hope you I hope you don't feel like I'm trying to confuse you because I'm not. What I'm hoping to do with this is if that was a way that you thought of like, hey, why didn't we do it that way? That is a, that's another way we could have done the problem. Um, it's just whatever kind of comes to your mind first when you're doing the problem, okay? But excellent questions. Okay, so look, let's finish up this stuff with the graphs.
and then we can move on to something a little bit different. Uh, visitors to the U.S. by region. So look, y'all, we got our percentages here. We have 18.7% coming from Europe, 12.5% coming from Asia, so on and so forth. Okay, the following graph shows the percent of visitors to the United States in 2012 from various regions. Using the circle graph shown, determine the percent of visitors who came to the United States from Mexico and Canada. So what are we going to do with those two percentages, y'all? We're going to add them up, right? 21.3 plus 34.1, 55.4. Okay, 55.4% came from Mexico and Canada. Okay, what about those coming from Europe, Asia, and South America? Let's see, Europe had how many? 18.7, so we're going to go 18.7%. Plus, let's see, what else? Asia and South America. Asia was 12 and a half. And South America was nine and a half, right? Okay, so let me grab my calculator real quick. 18.7 plus 12.5 ah, plus 9.5. All right. Perfect. Okay. So just a couple more here to do y'all. And it says, uh, we surveyed 500 bicyclists. We asked them how often they wore a helmet when biking, either never, seldom, usually, or always. 50% said they always wear a helmet, 25% said usually, 15% said seldom, 10% said never. Which one represents this, right? So look, y'all, we're, all we're trying to do is match it up. How many categories did we have? Four, right? We had always, we had usually, we had seldom, and we had never. Okay, so... I need to find the one that has four categories. See, right? It's the only one that's got four categories, right? And look, we can double check. 50% said always. There it is. 25% said usually. There it is. 15% said seldom. 10% said never. Okay, we're good. All right. Is in this bar graph, what does each mark on uh, the y-axis represent? Okay, so look, y'all, this is always going to be the x-axis. The one going up and down is going to be the y-axis. Look what each little box represents. Tuition costs and how much of dollars. Okay, so they're asking us each mark. That mark means, what, $2,000? This one means four. But what's the difference between those two? If I'm going from two to four to six to eight, they're all going up by how much? by $2,000 of tuition, right? That's all they're asking you to do there. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Okie dokie. Mean, median, and mode, y'all. Okay, mean, median, and mode. So mean refers to what we call the average. Okay, so remember how we find an average. The way we find an average, y'all, is we're gonna take we're going to add all the numbers we have. We're going to add them all up. And then we're going to divide by the number of numbers that we have. Okay. So look, let's take a look at this first problem. Let's see if we can't figure it out. It says seven students in a psychology class conducted an experiment on mazes. Each student was given a pencil and they were asked to successfully complete the same maze. The timed results are below. So we have Anne, Tan, Carlos, Jesse, Melinda, Ramsey, and Dany. Okay. Who completed the maze in the shortest time? Who was the fastest person to do this, all? Carlos, right? Okay, who took the longest time to get the maze done? Danny, right? Danny had the longest time. Okay, find the mean time. So, y'all, the way we're going to find the mean time is we're going to take those numbers, 13.2, 11.8, 10.7, 
16.2, and 18.5, and we're going to add them up. Can somebody do me a flavor? Can you, if anybody has a calculator, can you add those numbers and tell me what you come up with? A hundred point one. Perfect. Okay. So we added them all up, y'all. Now we need to divide by however many numbers we have. How many folks did we have here? Seven. So we're going to take a hundred and one, y'all. And we're going to divide it by seven. What do we get? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just couldn't hear you. 14.3. Okay. Sorry. I just couldn't hear you. Oops. Okay. 14.3. That's the mean time. That's the average time it took, okay? Now, look, y'all, it says find how many students took what longer than 14.3. So, look, I want to go longer than 14.3. One, two, three. Okay, so longer was three people. Okay, the next one says how many took shorter than the mean time? How many took shorter? Four. And we know that because it was a total of how many folks? Seven. And so if three took longer, because the rest had to take shorter, right? Okay. So again, y'all, how do we find the mean? It's just the average. We take the numbers, we add them up, and we divide by however many numbers we have. So look, 87 plus 75 plus 96 plus 91 plus 78. 427. How many numbers do I got here, y'all? Five. So we're going to take that number, we're going to divide it by five, and we come up with an 85.4. And there's our average, right? So again, finding an average is pretty straightforward, right? You add all your numbers up, divide by however many you have, and then we're done. Okay. So, look, y'all, we're still going to keep rounding here. Again, the reason why I put some of these problems on here is just to make sure that we read the problem carefully. I know we know how to find an average now, right? We don't need 100 problems to, find, to learn how to find an average, but we want to make sure that we read it carefully. Look what it says. Find the mean height of the four tallest buildings. Uh, round, your end, round results to one decimal place. Okay, we want to find the... Average height of the four tallest. Number one, let me ask you a question. Are those numbers already in order from biggest to smallest? Yeah, they are, right? And if we want the four tallest, wouldn't we just take those four right there and add those up? So look, 1483 plus another 1483 plus 1450 plus what? 1381. And we're going to divide it by how much? By four, right? Okay, we're going to round to one decimal place, y'all. 1449.2 or 0 0.3? 0 0.3, right? Because, remember, any time the number to the right is five or more, that number gets bumped up by one, right? So 1449.3. Okay. Okay. Y'all, when I, when I cover this stuff in, in my regular class, I always like doing this problem because this is a problem that applies to everybody. We all want to know how do we get our GPA, right? The college girls say this is your GPA. How do they get your GPA? So y'all, every grade has a point value. A's are worth four points. So let me write this up here on the top. A's are worth four points. B's are worth three points. C's are worth two points. D's are worth one point, and F's, unfortunately, no points, okay? Now, this is what we're going to do, y'all. So, look, they told us, look, we have a college math, a bio, an English, a PE, and a social studies class. These are the grades that the student earned. These are the point values. Remember what he said? A's are four, B's are three, C's are two, D's are one, F's don't have any. Okay, now, every class is counts for a number of credits or a number of hours, right? So what we're doing here, y'all, is we're multiplying. And that's how we're figuring out the number of credit hours, okay? So look, 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, 
two, and one. What we want to do, y'all, we want to add up all the points. Okay. So look, let me take my calculator. Let me add up all my points here. So I'm going to take 12 plus nine plus 12 again, plus two plus another two. How many points do we have? 37 points. Okay. Y'all, in addition to adding up all the points, we also need to add up the number of credit hours that we took. So we're going to add three and three and three and one and two. So one, two, three, that's nine. 10, how many credit hours? 12. 12 credit hours. Okay. Now, y'all, the way we find our GPA, we always take the number of points. And we always divide it by the number of hours. So we had 37 points. We have 12 hours. So look right here, y'all. We're going to take 37. We're going to divide it by 12. Y'all, when they do GPA, we always round GPA to two points. So look, if I was going to go to two decimal points, 3.08, and then there's a bunch of threes. The eight is the number that I'm looking to round. So I need to know, should I leave it as an eight or should I bump it up to a nine? Yeah, we got to look at the number to the right of it. It's a three. So we're going to leave that eight as it is. So 3.08 would be our GPA. Okay. With GPAs, guys, they always go to two decimal points. Okay. They always go to two decimal points. Now, what I like about this particular problem is that we can see, it's visual, right? We can see how they we did everything, right? I think... Okay, never not. Uh, but guys, if they don't give you those things, remember A's are four, B's are three, so on and so forth, okay? Now, the next thing we have here, y'all, is something we call the median. So if you think about when you're, if you're, say you drove from, I don't know, I'm going to make this up. If you drove from Donna over here, when you're on the expressway, the grass in the middle, that's what we call the median, right? The median is the stuff in the middle. So the median of a set of numbers, number one right here, y'all, says in numerical order. What does that mean I got to do? I got to put my numbers in order from smallest to biggest, okay, is the number in the middle. So number one, I'm going to put my numbers from smallest to biggest, and then the median will be the number in the middle. Okay, first question I want to ask you, look at these numbers here. Are they in order from smallest to biggest? Yeah, they are. Okay, what number is exactly in the middle there? That is our that is our median. Okay. The numbers have to be in order from smallest to biggest. Okay. Guys, let's look at this problem here. Are my numbers in order from smallest to biggest? Okay, so let's fix that first. What is the smallest number we got there? 36. Okay, I'm going to scratch that one out. What's the next one? What would be the next 65? Okay, after 65, what would be the next one? 71. Perfect. What would be the one after that? 78. Excellent. What would be the one after 78? 88, right? Okay, what would be the one after 88? 91, and then how many 95s? 91, and then 95 twice. Okay. Look, y'all, here are my numbers in order from smallest to biggest. How many numbers do we have, though? We got eight numbers. So, y'all, there really is no number that's exactly in the middle here, right? So what we do is we say, look, we're going to find the average of those two. The average of those, just those two numbers in the middle. If I have an even set of numbers, meaning I have eight numbers or 12 numbers or 100 numbers, I got to take the average of the middle two. So look what we're going to do. We're going to take our calculator. We're going to say what's 78 plus 88. And we're going to divide it by two. And we have 83. Y'all, this is my median. Remember what that means. Half of my numbers are smaller than 83. Half of my numbers are bigger than 83, right? That's what the median tells us. All righty. 10 buildings. Let me zoom in a little bit. 10 buildings are listed in the following table. 
find the median of the eight tallest buildings. Okay, guys, let me ask you a question. Are they already in order from smallest to biggest? Okay, but we only want to look at the which tallest? Eight tallest. Which numbers am I not going to use then? Building nine and what? Ten. So we're not going to look at those. Okay, so look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we got to find the average of the middle two. Would you guys agree that these are the middle two? Right? Because there's three here and there's three there. So we're going to find the average of those two. So look, let's add those two numbers together, y'all. 16, 16. Oops. 16, 16. And what? 1584. And we're going to divide it by 2. 1600. There you go. And there is the height of the eight in the middle. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, look at the next one here. It says the 10 tallest buildings are listed in the table. Uh, let's see. Without calculating, explain without calculating that the median height of the five tallest buildings is more than the median height of the eight tallest buildings. Okay, so look, y'all, if we wanted to find the median height of the five tallest buildings, that would have been which one? Wouldn't that have been building C? If we were looking at the five tallest buildings, that would be the one in the middle, right? Now, remember when we did, when we just did right now, when we found the height or the median of the eight tallest buildings, didn't we find the average of which ones? Didn't we do the average of those right now? Okay, so isn't this number here going to be higher than those right there, right? So look, we can see if we can figure this thing out by looking at, here we go. The median height of the five tallest building is the height of which building? The third one, right? And that of the eight tallest building is the average height of the fourth and the fifth. That's why, right? This number here is going to be higher than whatever that average is, right? Because again, they're already in order from biggest to smallest. Does that make sense? Okay. So again, that's all they're really asking me to do, right? They're not asking me, like, give me the exact values, but they're saying, look, which one is it? It's got to be the third if we're looking at the first five. Okay. okay. So, y'all, the next part I have here is the mode. The mode is just the number that occurs the most often. So when you have a list of numbers, what's the number that you saw the most often? That's going to be our mode. Guys, it's possible to have more than one mode. So sometimes you have a number that occurs, uh, a couple of numbers that occur the most, okay? So if I look here and I look at my answer, or I look at the set of numbers, would you guys agree that 14 and 77 would be my modes? Because those numbers occurred more than any of the other ones. They both occurred how many times? Twice, right? Okay, so we got 14 and we got 77. Now remember, the mode is the number that occurs the most often. If I look at this one here, it says find the mode of the list of numbers. Is there one number that occurs more than any of the others? 15, right? So, y'all, the reason why I wanted to mention that is sometimes people say, well, why didn't you list 10? Why don't you list 18? Because 15 occurred the what? The most, right? And in, in the previous problem, 14 and 77, they both occurred twice. No, we never had anything that occurred more than that. All right, so this next one here just says, find the median and the mode of the list of numbers. Okay, remember y'all, if we're gonna find the median, we gotta put our numbers in from order from smallest to biggest. What's the smallest number that we have here? How many 15s did we have, by the way? We had three of them, right? So let's go one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Then we had a 16 and an 18. Who would come after 18? 26 okay and then oh yeah another 26 very good thank you and then what a 30 and then a 31 and then what a 35 okay so look y'all let's do this part first remember the mode is the one that occurred the most often what number occurred the most 15 
Okay, so now let's see if we can find the median. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got ten numbers up here, y'all. So remember, the median is going to be the average of the two in the middle. What numbers are in the middle? 18 and 26, we're going to find the average of those. So 18 plus 26 divided by 2 is 22. And there's our median. Okay. So, guys, it's always a good idea to... Um, to find when you're going to take your numbers, it's always a good idea. Put them in order from smallest to biggest because you've got to find the median. It's already there. Y'all, the one thing I want to mention is when we have a bunch of numbers together, a lot of times the median is the more accurate number. Uh, what I want to mention, this is just kind of like a little piece of information. You guys, when I when I taught in Austin, I grabbed this from one of the books that I taught out of there. And, and I just thought it was a good idea. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through this here. But look what it says. When would someone want to use the mean and when would someone use the median, which is more helpful? It says the mean or the average. We, have, we actually use that a lot. I'm sure you guys have heard of averages before, right? Uh, I don't know how many of us have ever heard of median. But it says it's most helpful when the data is distributed fairly evenly. What I mean by that is the numbers are relatively close to each other. The, the average is a good idea. When the numbers have something that we call outliers, what I mean by that is that we have like, say, I'm looking at this problem here and we're gonna look at the numbers. We got, so how many numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six numbers. Okay, all those numbers are relatively close to each other. 9,000, 11, 14, 15, 17, 20. I mean, there's, a, there's some difference there, right? But they're still relatively close. Then it's fine to use an average. And so we notice here, like, look, if we said a company has employees, so they got six employees, these are the salaries, we would say the average salary is $14,333.33. And if you notice, y'all, you know, that's not too far from some of these numbers right here, right? 14,000 is kind of close to those. Obviously, not as close to 9,000, not as close to 20, but there's still a significant number that's close. But suppose the guy who was making 20,000 is now making how much? 90,000. Okay. Now, if we did the average there, look what the average would come out to. The average salary would come out to $26,000. Now, if we changed, again, if we changed this number here to 90,000, the average comes up to 26. But if you look at those numbers, they're not that close to 26,000, right? So when they find the median, the median ends up being 14,500, which was kind of close to that original average, wasn't it? But you see what I mean by an outlier? This number here is much bigger than all the other ones. That's what we call it an outlier, right? So we said, look, let's, let's do this. Let's take our average weights. If we put all these guys together and you throw me in, I'm going to be the biggest guy. I'm going to throw the average off, right? I'm going to increase the average of the average weight of this person in the class. But if we did, decided to do the median and we put the lightest person all the way to the heaviest, the median person would still be the person in the middle, right? Even if you brought in somebody who was twice as big as me, right, and you replaced me with somebody twice as big, that person in the middle would still stay in the middle. Does that make sense? Or if you brought somebody who was really, really, really small and you put them at the very end, the person in the middle would still stay in the middle. So a lot of times when we have those outliers, they will throw the average off, right? So guys, um, this is just like, just to kind of illustrate that again. So, right, I own my own home. Last year, they sent me, this is what your property value is. This is what you have to pay in taxes. I was like, these guys are ripping me off, right? So I went over there to go contest them. And they put up what they call comparables. They said, look, these are five houses in your neighborhood. And this is what they're worth. And this is how we're assessing yours, right? And I had to go in front of a panel of a bunch of people. And one of the person says, remove house number three. Well, when they removed house number three, they said, well, look at your average now. Look how much higher it is. I said, of course it is. What did you do? You took the house that had the smallest value and you, and you got rid of it. 
Have y'all ever been in a class where your teacher says, look guys, we're gonna have five quizzes. I'm gonna drop the lowest grade. What happens to your quiz grade? It goes up, right? That's exactly what I told him. I said, that's what you did. And when you're telling me this as if I'm not gonna know this. I teach math for a living. So when you say, let me get rid of the lowest house, well, so of course the average is gonna go up. Why don't you get rid of the house that has the what value? Then the rest of the property value is going to go up. You don't want to do that, right? But again, it's understanding that idea that makes it it makes it important to know when is it a good time to use the average, when is it a good time to use the median. If you have one number that's significantly bigger or one number that's significantly smaller than all the rest of them, the median is always going to be your better way. Okay. Uh, they, they they lowered it a little bit. Not not much, not much, but they lowered it a little bit. Okay, guys, the range. The range is the difference between the largest number and the smallest number. Okay, so we're going to look at the difference between the largest number and the smallest number. Okay, let's take a look. What's the, in this problem right here, y'all, what's my biggest number? 27 minus, what's my smallest number? 23, what's the difference? Boom. We're going to do the same thing here. Y'all agree this is the largest and that's the smallest? Okay, so let's do it. 5.10 minus 3.30, 1.8. Okay, that's how we find the range. Okay. okay, let's take a look here, y'all. It says, use the frequency distribution to A, find the mean, uh, B, uh, let's see, find the median and C, find the mode. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, so let's take a look at what they want us to do here. Guys, this is what they're telling me. I want to make sure that we're, we're clear with this. The number four occurs twice. The number five occurs twice. The number six occurs three times. Okay, so look. There's a couple of ways we can go about doing this. If we wanted to, we could make a list. So I'm going to put four. I'm going to put four again. Why? Because it occurred how many times? Twice, right? Then the next number is what? Five. How many times are we going to write down the number five? Good. One, two. Okay. How many times are we going to write down the number six? One, two, three. Okay. How many times are we going to write down the number seven? One, two, three, four. How many times are we going to write the number eight? One, two, three, four, five. How many times are we going to write down the number nine? There you go. One, two, three. Okay, so look, y'all, we can do this in pieces. You know which one to me is the easiest to do? The mode. Remember what the mode is? The one that occurred the most. What number occurred the most? Okay. Boom. That's why I said let's do that one. Okay, so now if we wanted to find, say, the average, right? The mean, the mean. Four times or four plus four is eight. Plus five and five is ten. Plus what are three sixes when you add them up? Eighteen. Plus four sevens is twenty-eight. Plus five eighths is forty. Plus three nines is 27. Okay, so I got 131. But y'all, I need to figure out what am I going to divide that by? 131 divided by, look, we're going to count how many numbers we had. Okay, so we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Very good. So look, we're going to take 131. We're going to divide it by 19. Okay, look what it tells me to do. Round it to how many decimal places? One decimal place. Y'all, I got a question for you. 6.8 or 6.9? 6.9. Boom. There we go. Okay, now we want to find the median. So notice, y'all, we had a total of 19 numbers, right? We want to find the one in the middle. Seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? Isn't that going to be the middle number? Because if there's, or actually, it would be the other one, right? But it's still going to be a seven. 
because there should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This guy is the one in the middle. There's our seven, right? And we could find our median that way. Because look what it tells me here. The frequency is the number of times you're going to write down the number eight. Right? So look, we ha I wrote down the number four. How many times? Two. How many times did I write down the number five? Two, right? How many times did I write down the number six? How many times did I write down the number seven? So on and so forth, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's what the frequency tells me. So the frequency tells me how many times are you going to write that number down? No, 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 no. So we weren't, that's why we didn't use the two, the four, the five, or the three, right? We didn't use them in the sense that we, we were writing down the number four, two times, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so look, y'all, I got another problem again, dealing with mean, median, and mode here. So look, we can do this problem, y'all, the same way. Look what we have. We just have this, y'all. Instead of being in that frequency table, we now have it in the histogram. Okay. So, look, this is the number two. How many twos did we have, y'all? Three. How many fours did I have? Six. How many sixes did we have? Six. How many uh, eights did we have? And how many tens did we have? Okay. So, we can do this. We're going to write down the number two three times, right? We're going to write down the number four how many times? Six. One, two, three, four, five six we're going to write down the number eight one two three four five six we're going to write down i'm sorry that number six right sorry one two three four five six okay we're going to write down the number eight how many times one two three four we're going to write down the number ten how many times one two three four and five. Okay, so look y'all, let's do it like this. Let's find our mean. Remember the way we're gonna find the mean? We're gonna add them all up, right? So we can go two plus two plus two. I'm gonna go real slow here. Plus, how many fours do I got? One, two, three, four, six, right? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Plus six sixes also, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus how many eights? One, two, three, four, plus how many tens? Five. Isn't that 50? Yes. Okay. Now, I got to divide by how many numbers did we have? So, let's look, y'all. If we want to figure out how many numbers we had, a couple of ways. You can count like that. Or you can say, look, 3 and 6 is 9, and 6 is 15, and 4 is 19, and another 5 is 24. So let's take 148, and let's divide it by 24. And I'm coming up with 6.16, like that, right? And it's telling me to round to how many decimal places? Tell me around to one decimal place. So look, y'all, 6.2, and we got it. Did I make sense, y'all, on how we're able to find the, that average? Okay. Remember, the median. Look, y'all, we have 24 numbers. Isn't the median going to be the average of the middle two? Okay, so we want to count to 12. You know what I mean? Because half of 24 is going to be 12, right? So look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, it would be the average of those two. What's the average of six and six? Still going to be six, right? Because you're going to take six plus six divided by two. That's 12. Oops. 12 divided by two, which is going to be six, right? Okay. Do we have a mode? Is there a number that occurred the most? Four and, and six, right? Because they both occurred how many times? six times right boom and then we got it okay guys was weren't these last two problems a little bit we, there's we still did median we still did mode we still did average 
but weren't these problems a little more complex than the first couple ones we had to do? So again, what I want to make sure is, do I understand how to find the mean, median, mode? Yes, I do. But I don't, I want you to be able to do it for these problems too, right? Like, okay, what does it mean? We're going to add them all up. We're going to divide by however many we have, okay? Okay. So, y'all, one of the things we're going to do, again, when I noticed, y'all, when I took the TSI test, uh, y'all, what I noticed was there was a lot of problems dealing with like st uh, statistics type stuff. So like what we've just been doing right now. One of the things that we do in statistics is, so I'm just going to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about here. So we have the highway miles per gallon for cars that were made in 2013. These are mini compact cars, right? Like, so look, tiny, tiny cars, right? Uh, Toyota Yaris, right? Ford, uh, what is it? focus or whatever, you know what I mean? Little, little small cars, right? So what we want to do is instead of having to um, look at all the information like this, we want to see if we can organize the information. Uh, one of the ways we do this, y'all, is we organize this in something called a stem and leaf plot. So what I want to do, y'all, I want to look for the smallest number that I have here. Does it look like the smallest number is 19? Okay. So we're going to kind of write this in a way where we kind of use the idea of a frequency table. Uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to put a one here and then I'm going to draw a line going all the way down. Y'all, what this means is that one, that's the tens value. You know what I mean? When we have like place values and stuff like we got 16, 17, 18, 19, so on and so forth. That's the tens value. So it looks like the smallest number we had was 19. The question I want to ask y'all is how many 19s did we have? We had three. So look, I'm going to go like this. One, two, and three. That means it's 19, 19, 19. Does that make sense? I'm trying to kind of organize it in a way that we call stem and leaf plots. Now, we didn't have any other values in the teens, did we? Okay. So after the teens, the next one we would have would go to the 20s. What I want to do here, y'all, is I want to try to go in numerical order. So let me ask you a question. If I look at this information here, do I have any numbers that are exactly 20? No. Do I have any 21s? Do we have any 22s? Okay, so let's go like this. There's one, two, three. So I'm going to go like this. One, two, three. That means there's three numbers that are 22. Do we have any other 22s? Other than those three, did we have any other 22s? Okay, guys, do we have any 23s? 23s? I don't see any 23s. Do we have any 24s? Okay, so look, I see one. So I'm going to put a 24 right there. Nothing else in this row. What about this one here? 24s. Not that one. I see two. I see three. I see four. I see five. Does it look like there's five 24s? Okay. Am I doing okay to hum writing these numbers out, y'all? Okay. Just want to make sure we're good. Y'all, are there any other 24s? I don't think so. Do we have any 25s? There's one and two. So one and two right there. It looks like those are all my 25s. What do y'all think? Okay. Y'all, let's try this. Do we have any 26s? Okay. Okay. So y'all, again, because there's a lot of numbers here, I want to try to go like in a nice, clean fashion. So look, I see this guy up here. So look, y'all, I'm going to put a two. There's my 26. That took care of the 26s here. I see one. There's one right there. Uh, I see two right there. I see three right there. I see one more right there. In the next column, I'm just going down. I see one more right here. I see another one right there. Okay. Any more in that same column? No. What about the last one? No 26s there either. Okay. So y'all, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to write another two right here. Because after 26, the next number I would have would be what? 27. Okay. Let's see. Do we have any 27s? In this column, no 27s. Here I got one. So 127 there. Okay, here I got one, another one, another one right there, another one right there, 
another one right there. Any 27s in the last column or the left column? Run here, one and another 27. And looks like we got one more 27, right? You see what I'm doing here, y'all? I'm just, again, trying to organize my information. Y'all, after 27, the next number I would be looking at would be 20 what? 28. Okay, do we have any 28s, say, in this right-hand column over here? 28s? No. What about here? Tampoco, right? Okay, so look right here. I got one, two. There's three right there, okay? And there's four right there, and I agree. One more, five. Okay, y'all, do we have any 29s at all? No, no 29s. Okay, so guys, what would be the next number I'm going to look at? 30, okay. So look, let's look at this right-hand column. Look, I got one and two, okay? And this one here, I don't see any 30s. I don't see any 30s here. Doesn't look like we have any more 30s, right? Just those two? Okay, do we have any 31s? No. What about 32s? Do we have any 33s? No. 34s. Okay, so I got one right here, 34 right there. Another one right here. Another one right here. Uh, and then, what, three over here? Five, four over here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? Okay, it looks like we got all, oh, one more, right? That one right there? I forgot to get that guy. Okay, guys, do we have any 35s? Okay, let's keep going, 35s. Okay, so let's see, 35s, I got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, do we have any 36s? How many 36s do we got? Just one, right? Okay, and do we have any 37s? Two, perfect, thank you. One, two, okay. Now you might say, okay, why did you go through all this? Because now I can tell you, I have three numbers in the teens. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. I have thirty numbers in the twenties. You see what I mean? All this helped me do, y'all, is at least it helped me organize my information, right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have 18 numbers in the what? In the 30s. Okay, and we had how many numbers in the teens? Three. Okay, y'all, so now look at the first question. What's the total number of vehicles? Would you guys agree we could just add those numbers up? 51? Yep, three and 30 and 18 gives us 51. There's 51 vehicles. Okay. How many vehicles get less than 30 miles a gallon? Less than 30 would be, that means that they get in the teens or in the what? Or in the 20s. How many you got in the teens or in the 20s? 33. Does that make sense? Okay. How many vehicles get 30 miles a gallon or more? How many? Uh, 30 miles, 30 gallons or more would be these, right? Which would be how many? 18, right? There we go. So, yo, what, what the stem and leaf plot allows me to do is it at least, you know, again, it's not perfect, but it helps me organize my information, right? So now that I have that, I can now begin to answer more questions, right? Okay, what is the range? Do y'all remember what the range was? The highest number minus the lowest. What was the highest number we had? 37. What was the lowest? 19. What's 37 minus 19? 18. That tells me, bless you, that tells me that the car range, the ranges in miles per gallon, y'all, ranges by 18 miles a gallon, right? So you got one car, 37 miles a gallon. Man, you can drive from here to Falfurias on an ounce of gas, right? The other one is 19 gallons, right? So not bad, but 
37 is much better, right? Okay, now when it says, what is the most densely populated bin and the least densely populated bin? This is what we mean by that. We're talking about frequency. The ones that had, yeah, there was 30, right? And that was in the range of the what? In the cars that got in the what miles per gallon range? In the 20s, right? Which one had the least? The cars that got in the what? And the, it was three cars, but they got in the what? In the teens? Does that make sense? So like these cars are getting in the teens, right? I know they're all 19, but they were still in the teens. These were the ones getting it in the 20. So the one that had the most populated bin would be cars that are getting in the 20 miles, right? 20 to 29. Mm -hmm. And these would be in the teens, which is typically 10 to 19, right? So we would say here, y'all, the most densely populated bin would be 20 to 29 miles per gallon. And the least would be the 10 to 19, right? Now, again, remember, we didn't have anybody who got 10 miles a gallon or 12 miles a gallon, but they were still in the teens. And that's kind of how we categorize them, right? And this is, yeah, what we made right here, this is what we call a stem and leaf plot. And all it really does for me is it helps me organize my information. So if you notice the way the numbers were given to me before, they were kind of just all jumbled in there, right? At least we put them in order from smallest to what? To largest, right? So look, if we wanted to find the median, we should be able to find the median, right? Because we know it would be the number in the what? In the middle. And now my numbers are in order. So we'd be able to find our median if we needed to, right? Okay, again, y'all, the reason why I'm bringing, that's the reason why I was covering a lot of this stuff was, again, when I took the TSI test, I took, it was like, uh, I want to say sometime in the fall of 21. And what I noticed was there was a lot of, more, there was a, quite a few problems where you had to kind of look at the information and find mean, median, or mode, or find ranges or stuff like that, right? Find numbers, find answers based on data like this. And that's why I kind of wanted to go through this stuff. Okay, so look, y'all. We got another problem here uh, dealing with stem and leaf plots. So look, I'm just going to kind of scroll in here so we can see that a little bit better. Look what they tell me. One slash five means 15 miles per gallon, right? So look, y'all, if I were to look at this picture here, could you tell me how many cars get 18 miles a gallon? How many cars get 18 miles a gallon if we zoom in? Four cars, right? Why four? One, two, three, four, right? There's four cars that get 18 miles a gallon, right? It, we wanted to figure out how many cars get 42 miles a gallon. Well, there's one car that gets 42 miles a gallon, right? Okay, so again, that's what the stem and leaf plot allows me to do, okay? Now, let's take a look and let's see if we can answer our questions. Okay, what we want to do is we want to fill in the blanks here. We want to know how many cars get in the teens, the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s. Okay, so let's zoom in. How many cars would you say get in the teens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. We got an eight right there. Okay, guys, we got to count the 20s. Okay, we're going to be here for a little while. So let's do them. Look, can we go like this? Can we say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34? Was that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I want to make sure we did that right. 34, right? There's 34 cars that get in the 20s. Let's do the same thing for the 30s, y'all. Okay. Can we do this, y'all? Can we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, how much? 22, right? Y'all, how many cars get in the 40s? Three, sorry. Boom. Okay, same kind of thing here, y'all. Which is the most populated bin? The one that got in the what? in the 20 to 29 mile per gallon range, right? Which one had the least populated bin? And the 40 to 49 mile per gallon range, right? Okay. All right. So guys, let's, 
I'm just trying to see where we are here. Let's uh, let's finish up this stuff here, and then we can take a little break. If you guys, y'all, we're probably ready for one, maybe. Uh, so look, y'all, 20 members of a health club who jogged who jog were asked to how many miles they jog per week. Use the the responses are given to the right. Construct a stem leaf plot for single digit data. Use a stem of zero. Okay, so look, y'all, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna go zero. Okay, do we have any single digit numbers? We got a two and we have what else? Uh, do we have sevens though? How many sevens? Okay, so look, so you look y'all, I'm gonna go one, two. Do we have any anything other than a seven? We got an eight, boom. Now let's do the teens. So anything between 10 and 19. Okay. Do we have any 10s? Do we have any 11s? How many 11s? Do we have any 12s? How many? Okay. Do we have any 13s? 14s? One? Okay. 15s? Just one. Okay. Look, y'all, when I run out of room, I just put another one down here. Okay, do we have any 16s? No, 17s. Two? One, two. Uh, no, oh yeah, an 18? And a 19, right? Okay, now let's go to the 20s. Do we have any numbers that are exactly 20? No. Do we have any 21s? I got one right here, 21. Uh, 22s? No, 23s, 24s, one, and a 25, 26, okay, and we still got a 27, okay, so I'm just going to throw the seven right there, it looks like those are all the 20s, okay, so look y'all, I'm going to go 30s, do we have any 30s, uh, no 30s, 31s, 32s, Two of them, right? After the 32s, the next number is what? 42. So I'm just going to add a four down there and add my two right there. And there we go. All right. So, guys, I apologize about this one here, but I it looks like I cut off the numbers. I think that's a 24. That looks probably like a 43. That looks like a 35. I don't know what that's, 61? Okay. So let's do it like this. It's just asking me to make my stem and leaf plot. Um, and it's it's multiple choice, right? So, uh, you know, if I was doing this, y'all, what I might probably try to do is based on what I have. I mean, I know we know how to do stem and leaf plots already, right? But, like, let's do this. Like, do you see any 40s? 43? That's the only 40s we got, right? How many 43s do we have? Okay, so so far I'm looking at that one. I'm saying that looks pretty good. What about over here? That one only has how many? It's got to be that choice. You see what I'm doing? Right? I don't have to go through the whole process because we know there's going to be two 43s. One of them only has one. This has got to be the one that has two. Right? Okay, so I'll tell you what, guys. Look, let's take a 15-minute break. Let's come back at 11. Uh, I'm sorry? Are we good?